So I'm Paula Bailey and I am a full-time district judge and I sit at the Combined Court Centre at uh, Stoke-on-Trent in Hanley. Working class background, my dad was a painter and decorator. My mum was a dinner nanny, as we call them in the North East. I think they're now called lunchtime supervisors. I was the first in my family to attend university. Education and books give you the tools to be whatever you want to be. If you're prepared to work hard enough, you can be whatever you want to be. It doesn't matter if your mum is a dinner nanny. If you're willing to put the work in, you can achieve anything that you want to achieve. Part of my job is to try and help them understand that there might be changes they need to make. I always explain to parents, I'm not there to be on their side. I am on the side of their child and their welfare is my paramount consideration. And they can usually understand that. So part of my day, I might be speaking to a really angry mum Part of my day, I might be hearing evidence from an expert and you've got to switch and be able to make yourself understood by someone who doesn't understand the law at all through no fault of theirs, through to speaking to expert doctors, paediatricians. So it's really about understanding your audience, but the biggest challenge is trying to make sure that whoever leaves my courtroom or chambers understands what I've done and why I've done it. And if I haven't done that, then I haven't done my job properly. My absolute favourite part of the job is adoption celebration hearings. That's a really lovely thing to be able to do. So in the event that children can't for whatever reason return to either of their parents or with a member of the family and the only option then is adoption after orders are granted we like to invite the children along with their adoptive parents and family to come to the court to celebrate and it's a lovely occasion i get the children involved they stamp the certificate that we do sometimes more often than is strictly necessary but it's all part of it and it's lovely and we give the children a bear so there's lots of baby bears out there because that's what the little ones decide to call the bear when they realize what my name is and uh, we get to have a really lovely occasion lots of photographs of all of the family members with the adoption social worker before covid we would hold those very regularly and it was certainly the highlight of my day beyond question so this is the courtroom that i've been sitting in today so over here we've got the witness box so if someone's going to give evidence to me they can sit there or they can stand up, however they're more comfortable. Uh, they'll be sworn in by the court clerk and there's cards for them to read out. So dependent on whether they're a person of faith or whether they want to affirm if they're not religious. Um, we have all of the different holy books and they're all covered up. So the clerk will uh, help with all of that. So the setup here is really similar to a lot of courtrooms, but some are bigger. They'll all have the royal crest. The judge will always be a bit higher than everyone else. There'll always be space at the front for the clerk. And then there'll be uh, either desks or benches for the lawyers or the parents to sit. So if I'm uh, hearing a case, this is where I would sit. My clerk would be in front of me and then I'd be able to see the witness if I'm hearing evidence from there. And then the lawyers are sat at the desks in front, so I'm able to see everything that's happening in the courtroom, uh, see what's happening in the witness box. Uh, and then of course, if there's somebody on the link, uh, I can see that there. Once the case is dealt with, or I might need to go away and think about my decision, I go through to my chambers which is behind this curtain. 
So that's where the judges might have a think about what they want to do, where they'll have all of their papers. They might have uh, some refer work to have a look at or members of staff might come through with a query. So they'll always come through to the room behind. So this is the room uh, where I work when I'm not sitting uh, in the courtroom. So I've got my laptop, I've got my printer, I've got a second screen if I'm looking at an electronic bundle. Uh, I've got the family court bible, which is the red book, which is what all family court judges. It's got all of the law in there that we need. Calendar, very important. Uh, and then this is uh, a notebook that judges use. So I'm about to finish that one. But this is the notebook where judges keep all of their notes, which is judges' notebook. What makes a good judge? I think being a good communicator, being a, an effective listener. Quite a lot of my job as a judge is listening carefully to what people are saying to me. Think about all of the different arguments and then be able to explain to the person who's maybe not successful why it is that you've reached that decision. So being an effective communicator, but a better listener, being interested in people if you want to sit in the family court, because it's all about people and how they interact with one another. That comes from life experience. And it's not just book intelligence, it's emotional intelligence. And I think as a family court judge, you need emotional intelligence in spades. I am really conscious that even now, perhaps women are underrepresented uh, at all levels of the judiciary, although it's much better at district bench level. But I still get letters saying, uh, uh, dear sir, or assuming I'm a man. Those attitudes do still exist. So I think if somebody thinks of what a judge might be, I think most people would probably think it's a man, might probably think that they're middle class or um, went to public school. And I think there's still a lot of work that can be done. It's really important that there is representation across all of the uh, so different social groups, whether it's someone's uh, uh, sexuality, whether it's somebody's faith, race. I think my own experiences mean that I am able sometimes to speak to people in a very direct way that might help them understand what the problem is and what might need to be done to fix it. I think sometimes people think that judges are really posh, they're going to talk down to them, are going to maybe judge them. And I think maybe hearing somebody like me, who's got a regional dialect still, um, speak to them in a straightforward way without using flowery language, that simple language that they can understand, I hope helps them understand what I can uh, do to try and help them uh, make things better going forward or what they might need to do in terms of their behaviour to get a better outcome. We definitely have more work to do and we need to be representative of the society that we are in. Sometimes there are those cases where somebody isn't able to look after a child. And that might be because they simply can't look after themselves. So we deal with cases where a parent might have a, a learning disability. And of course, we would never refuse to send a child back to a parent simply because they had some difficulties but there are some cases where it is so profound that they literally couldn't 
give safe care to that child without a social worker moving into that house and living there 24 seven. Those are the heartbreaking types of cases where it's not through any fault of theirs, but because of something uh, that they have no control over, that they simply can't learn the skills and retain the skills to be able to offer safe care to a child those are very difficult cases and it's really hard. One of the saddest cases I had was a was a mum who unquestionably loved their child and it was a very hard decision, hard to keep it together, to turn around and say, I'm really sorry, but other decisions need to be made. But I just have to keep as the focus that it's the child who I have to think about. As, as sorry as I might feel for a parent. I would absolutely recommend uh, applying for the Judicial Work Shadowing Scheme, even if you don't think that you might have the qualities and abilities to become a part or full-time judge. I think it's value in itself just to understand what it's like from the other side of the desk the things that judges do that lawyers don't get to see, whether they're a legal executive, a solicitor or a barrister, I would really encourage people from a, a, a solicitor background like I was or legal executives in particular to really think about what they can offer. The thing about solicitors is that they have lots of skills and strengths that their colleagues at the bar perhaps don't have and I think now the competitions that have been run recently, there's been a lot of interest from the bar who would traditionally apply to the circuit bench, who see the district bench as a stepping stone to other judicial positions. I am so privileged to be a district judge. I would never go back to private practice as much as I loved that job because I get a real sense of satisfaction and feel that I am part of a bigger process in making decisions and uh, whether that's that a child can go home, whether that's that a child can't go home, but I've never ever felt that uh, I didn't want to get up and go to work and I have a, a real sense of pride in the little part that I play in the family justice system and I feel really privileged to be able to do this job.